It was an intense back and forth game. The 2023 Apple Cup came down to that kick. UW survived a scrappy Washington State team who came into Seattle to play today. Thanks for joining us here tonight. I'm Jordan Smith. This year's Apple Cup had fans all across the country on the edge of their seats. A lot was at stake tonight. UW playing to keep their college football playoff hopes alive in Washington State trying to play the spoiler and earn bowl eligibility. Our sports director, Julian Minnenson, was at the game. And Julian, I think everybody expected UW to pull away, but Washington State stayed with them every step of the way tonight. That's right, Jordan. I'm here at Husky Stadium. You see a purple glow behind me, quiet. That's all that's kind of left right now of what was a classic Apple Cup. The 115th Apple Cup was also the last one as conference foes between Washington and Washington State. It was back and forth. They traded blow for blow. It was a tug of war and no team wanted to let go. The Huskies made one more play than the Cougars did tonight, and that was the difference in this one. The 115th Apple Cup featured Heisman frontrunner and Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. and the Cougs looking for bowl eligibility. That top 10 Huskies offense struck first. Running back Dylan Johnson rushed ahead for the touchdown, but the Huskies and Cougars traded blow for blow all game long. Here are the Cougs. Cameron War connects with Josh Kelly, 22 yards for the score, tie game after the first. But the Huskies would answer in a big way. Penix goes to his top target from all season long, Roma Dunze. UW pulls in front after the touchdown. But the Cougs have some late quarter magic up their sleeve. With the clock winding down, it'll be Ward dialing it up for Kyle Williams in the corner of the end zone. He would get in bounds. Refs call a touchdown, game tied at 14 at halftime. Second half, there is that combination once again for the Huskies. It's Penix to Odunze as the Huskies go in front 21 to 14. Now the Cougs would answer once again, this time in the red zone under six minutes to go. It'll be Lincoln Victor who's come up clutch all season long and he does again here. Now crucial fourth and one for the Huskies and they try a reverse. They go for it on fourth down and the gamble pays off and that sets up Washington for this kick. Grady Gross, the Apple Cup rests on his foot. The Cougs will do their best to block it but it splits the upright and good. Huskies win 24-21. Washington State's season comes to a heartbreaking end. When you invest in people, you just want it so bad for them. Not for you, but for them and for their work and what they've done and like I said what they've given our program. You know, I think they've carved a future and I just I'm disappointed for them that we couldn't deliver for them. You know, not just this game, but you know, as a whole. Right? This shouldn't be our last game. So just told them I love them, that I'm here for them whenever they're needed, and uh, I'm proud of them. An emotional Jake Dickert right there, of course. Now, what this means for both programs, Washington seemingly has an inside track of the college football playoff. A spot in the CFP is on the line next week in the Pac-12 championship game against the Oregon Ducks. As for Washington State, this ends their streak of bowl games. They were going for an eighth straight bowl game, could not make it and get it done tonight. And now you enter a season of uncertainty, an offseason of uncertainty. With WSU and OSU trying to rebuild the Pac-12. And next week, December 4th is the date. The transfer portal opens for players to leave or go find a new home. And player retention is the number one thing on Jake Dickert's priority list right now. Jordan. Well, Julian, as the dust settles on this loss, I mean, what's the outlook on the season if you're the Cougars? How do you put this season that started off so promising and ends in such a heartbreaking fashion into perspective? Well, this was arguably the toughest season in Washington State school history. You think of conference realignment and WSU on the outside looking into that. TV broadcasters didn't think they deserve a bid into a power conference. Then you think of the ripple effect that that has on recruiting and NIL and player retention, the transfer portal. WSU now has a competitive disadvantage when it comes to that. And then you think of the on-the-field issues that happened this year. You were 4-0, top of the world, and then you lose six straight excruciating games, one of the longest losing streaks that this program's had in quite some time. And even with all that said, taking all of that into consideration, you were still one play away from getting to an eighth straight bowl game. So 
with that said, Jake Dickert will be back next year. You see how many players you can get back next year. There's uncertainty within the conference. There's uncertainty within scheduling. There's uncertainty with what the roster and is going to look like and who you're going to play. But one thing is for sure that Old Crimson will be high in the sky this time next year. Jordan. Julian, thanks so much for that. Some great reporting from you all week.